Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhad. In this session, we would look at investment and equity securities. This topic is covered in financial accounting, intermediate accounting, much more in depth, and the CPA exam, the FAR section. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, tax, and finance lectures. This is a list of all the courses that I cover, including many CPA questions. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in playlist, subscribe to the channel. If they help you, it means they might help other people. Connect with me on Instagram. On my website, you will find additional resources, such as practice questions, true, false, multiple choice notes, especially if you are studying for your CPA exam, CMA exam, EA, or you're taking your accounting courses. I strongly check out my website. If you want to learn about the prerequisite for this recording, please check in the description and I'll have the prerequisite. So what we need to talk about is classification and reporting of investments. We talked that for an investment to be classified, first we have to determine whether it's debt or equity, and we already talked about that, and this section will focus on equity. That's the first thing, the type of the security. Two, is the is it short term or is it long term? Three, and this is important, three is important in this session, is the percentage of ownership in another company's equity. How much, how much do you own? How much do you own? 10%, 15%? Uh, 30 percent so forth uh, so on and so forth so for the investment section we already covered those held to maturity trading and available for sale in this session we would look at insignificant influence we will look at significant influence and we will just don't look at the controlling influence at all so let's take a look at the degree of percentage so here we're we're discussing equity investments you buy stocks so when you buy stocks how do you account for those investments well it all depends if you own between zero to twenty percent you're going to account for this investment at something called cost or market value well we're going to see what cost and market value means in a moment if you own less than twenty percent it means you lack significant influence it means you have no saying in the company although in the real world let me tell you something sometimes you might only own five percent and you might have a major saying in the company why because all the other shareholder shareholders they own smaller amount but that's beside the point from an accounting perspective it's zero to twenty percent if you own between 20 to 50 now you consider to have significant influence here what we say here we say you have what we called significant influence and what does that mean it means you have enough power to vote yourself on the board of directors you have enough power to vote your friends so you have a saying in the company therefore we're going to be using the accounting method which will work in the next session if you own more than 50 percent which is 50 to 100 we will consolidate your investments which is we don't cover consolidation in this chapter so the best way to illustrate this is just to start to look at examples to see how we account for investments so starting with very simple example um, so the equity investments are initially recorded at cost, just like any other investments in assets when acquired, including any commission or brokerage fee. So you, if you pay the brokerage fee or commission, they get added to the cost. Let's assume ITI purchased 100 shares for $7,000. Simply put, you will debit stock investments, $7,000, credit cash, $7,000. So the initial investment is recorded at cost. On 11-1, the company received ten dollars in dividend well we debit cash and we credit dividend revenue simply put we receive cash because we hold the stocks that's the cash is coming from the profit it's technically it's called dividend revenue now let's assume uh the iti portfolio has a cost of seven thousand which let's not let's not assume that we have a cost of seven thousand fair value at the end of the year is nine thousand what does that mean it means when we purchase them the cost equal to seven now the fair value of those investments equal to nine think about it this way you bought a house for seven thousand dollar now your house is worth nine thousand what you have here is something called unrealized gain unrealized gain unrealized means you did not sell it so the gain is unrealized you have it but you did not cash it out now when you have investments in securities and you own between zero to 20%, we, say, we said we have to use cost or 
fair market value. Well, what does that mean? It means you have to adjust your investment. It means you have to adjust your investment. Now we're going to go back to what? We're going to go back to the fair value adjustments. How do we prepare fair value adjustments? Okay. When we prepare fair value adjustments, we have an account called fair value adjustments and a corresponding account called unrealized holding gain slash loss and for equity it's going to go into income okay now just like with debt securities okay maybe let me just kind of fix this the first account is called fair value adjustment and it's basically a fair value adjustment account and the other account is unrealized holding gain slash loss it's either a gain or a loss so when you have a gain when you have a gain of two, so the first thing you say okay i have a gain of ten thousand a gain of ten thousand means i should have a debit balance in fair value adjustment of two thousand it means you have to have a debit balance of two thousand excellent if you have to have a debit balance of two thousand what do you need to do you need to debit this account two thousand if you debit this account 2000 the corresponding credit is 2000 here for unrealized gain or loss and this is your adjustment therefore you debit fair value adjustment 2000 credit unrealized gain here it's unrealized gain because this account could be a gain could, could be a loss again is a credit a loss is a debit and therefore you just prepared your first adjustment your first fair market value adjustment now this is 2019, so I'm going to take this example and we're going to assume 1231, 2020, because you need to understand how do you adjust your portfolio from year to year. So, so let's do this. So this is uh, 1231, 19. Let's assume in 1231. 2020 you looked at your portfolio again you look at your portfolio and here's what you see you see that your portfolio has a cost of 1 million fair value of 1 million and 3,000 so you would say okay I have unrealized gain of 3 thousand this is a gain of three thousand what do you say when you said you have unrealized gain of three thousand well it means if i have unrealized gain of three thousand it means i should have a debit balance of three thousand the balance should be three thousand debit and fair value now if the debit balance is three thousand what do i need to do well the entry will be i need to debit fair value adjustment for a thousand hold on a second didn't you say three thousand yes i said three thousand i already have two thousand all what i need is a thousand now i am at three thousand and i credit the unrealized holding gain slash loss another thousand and i credit this a thousand now i'm up to three thousand okay so simply put i'm going to show you this on a on a timeline on a timeline this is what it looks like the first year 2019 we had in 2019 we had two thousand dollar of gains in 2020 we had three thousand dollars of gains so what we did is we moved to the right one thousand unit and this is your adjustment and this is your adjustment 2020 now let's go to 2021 2021 in 2021 you had a portfolio with the cost of ten thousand dollar you sold everything that you had those million shares and fair market value of let's make it six thousand okay now what happened is, is you have a loss of four thousand dollar what does that mean it means now if this is zero you are at one thousand two thousand three thousand four thousand you're supposed to be here so you you are here now you are here now and you have to move from three thousand gain to seven thousand loss it means 
in the fair value account, you have to have a balance of, your balance has to be a credit because it's a loss. Your balance has to be a credit of 7,000. Your balance, this is your balance. You should end up with a 7,000. Well, if I need to end up with a 7,000, it means I need to credit this, I'm sorry, if I need to end up with 4,000, I need to credit this account 7,000. So the 7,000 to make this zero and keep me with 4,000. So if I credit fair value adjustment 7,000, I have to debit this account 7,000, 7,000 debit 3,000 credit, will keep me 4,000 a loss, which is, this is what I have, 4,000 loss. And notice here, I moved 7,000 to the left. So every time I move to, to the left, I debit. Every time I move to the left, I debit. Unrealized gain slash loss. Here, it's a loss of 7,000. And I credit fair value adjustment 7,000. So here's the, here's the trick. Every time you move to the left, this is your entry. Every time you move to the right, so next, so in 2022, you could have more losses than 4,000, or you could rec start to recoup your losses and go into gain and move to the right. Every time you move to the right, this is your journal entry. Okay, and make sure you know how many units you are moving back and forth. I hopefully, this will clarify the fair value adjustment. Many students have issues with it. So let's go back here. So let's go back to the where we report things. Unrealized gain and loss is reported and other revenue and expenses, obviously on the income statement. Fair value adjustment, it's a permanent asset which report adjustment to the portfolio. It goes on the balance sheet and this is what it looks like. So the fair value is listed under the asset. It's added to the asset because it's a gain and uh, the net amount is 9,000. Or in some companies what they do, they show you 9,000 and they'll show you the cost and the gain is 2000 Now, sometimes what you do is you sell your investments. So let's take a look at an example when you sell them. When the investments are sold, what you do is you would look at the difference between how much you received, the net proceeds, and the cost. And the difference is either a gain or a loss. Okay, let's take a look at an example. So the prior period fair value adjustment not used in compute gain or loss from the sale of stock. So let's take a look at this. Let's assume March 9th, we sold a stock with $500 cost for $800. Well, we, the net proceeds is, stop it, Daddy. The net proceeds is 800 and, and the cost is 500 So 800 800 minus 500 equal to 300, we have a gain. So now how do we book the transaction? We received cash of 800, so we're gonna debit cash, 800, credit the investment, which is a stock investment for 500, and the difference is a gain, the gain is 300. So it looks something like this. Debit cash, credit stock investment, credit the gain on the Invest. So let's take a look at a few examples to illustrate the concepts of selling or maintaining the uh, portfolio of equity securities. The, the, the most challenging aspect in, in this chapter is to adjust your portfolio from period to period, from year to year. And hopefully I, you know, I, I was able to explain this, so make sure you know this. Otherwise, the journal entries for basic purchases, sale, and dividend, it's not, it's not a problem. It's when you have to adjust your portfolio, especially starting year two, because you have to take into account what's in year one. So let's take a look at these journal entries. This company purchased investments in trading securities at a cost of 130 on December 15. This is the first and only purchase of such securities. On December 28, they received $15 in cash from the purchase. And the stock at the end of the year was trading at 140. So we have to record the purchase, the dividend, and the fair value adjustments. Three things. First, record the purchase. Well, we bought, we purchased a stock. Debit short-term investments, credit cash. And now we have short-term investments of $130. Transaction two, we received $15 of dividend, debit cash, credit dividend revenue. That's pretty straightforward. Transaction three, which is, this is the fair value adjustment, which is the fair value adjustment given at 140. What they're telling us here is our balance should be, this should be 140. That's what they're saying. It should be 140. We have a gain of 
we have a gain of ten dollars so what does that mean well we don't we don't add the ten dollars to the to the investments we add the ten dollars to the fair value adjustment if it's a gain of ten dollars it means we have to have a debit of ten dollars well if we if we need to have a debit of ten ten dollars and we don't have any prior balance it means the entry is ten dollars fair value adjustment remember from is from the line perspective we're going from zero we didn't have anything and we're moving to the right remember if we're moving to the right we debit fair value adjustments we credit unrealized holding gain slash loss so we credit this account ten dollars okay so that's the entry so first what what should be the balance be it should be 10 okay so i i make the 10 so i make the adjustments i debit fair value adjustments and obviously i credit i debit fair value adjustments and i credit unrealized holding gain or loss okay so first determine what's the current balance account should is equal to the current balance account equal to zero in fair value adjustment determine what the account should be it should be 10 and find the difference which is 10 okay now remember year two so now it's zero and now this is year one you're at a 10 you're at a ten dollar gain year two you could be moving further to the right or you could go further to the left or you could go, go to the left you could go to the left and stay positive and you could go to the left and become negative it doesn't matter the entry would reverse okay if you're going to the left and if you're going to the right you're going from ten ten dollar gain to twenty two dollar gain then it's the same entry but you will add 12 units hopefully this makes sense because again this this issue gives problem give this issue gives students a lot of problem okay so this is the adjustments we already looked at this and this is how things are presented because they're asking us how things are presented short-term investments would be recorded at cost the cost is 130 fair value adjustment is positive now if you had a loss it will be a negative okay and it would reduce the 130 but it's a gain therefore it's a plus and this is your portfolio on the balance sheet on the income statement you are going to have other a dividend under other revenue and gain of $15 and unrealized holding gain of $10. This is what you will have. Now let's assume you sold one of those investments, okay, and you sold some of them. You sold $33 of the $130 and you sold them for $36. Well, if you sold them for $36, you sold them for more than when you purchased them for. Therefore, you have a gain. You have $3 gain. Therefore, you debit your cash. This is the net proceeds, $36. You remove the investments, you credit short-term investments, which is you're going to credit this account, and you have a gain, a new gain, which is a realized gain. Now, your short-term investments is $97. If you like this recording, please like it, share it, subscribe, put it in playlist. In the next session, I would look at the equity method. As always, I would like to remind you to look at my website for additional resources, especially if you are studying for your CPA exam. If you need those seven to ten points i am here to help you get there good luck study hard and stay safe especially during those corona